Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. We are here for part four of the Epic 7 New Player Guide. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord. Okay, so I have made significant progress since part three of this, you know, guide series. Uh, I wanted to plow through a lot of content so that we could kind of get to the next things that you guys might have questions about if you're a new player. So I've been following along with the adventure path, and I've been also continuing progressing through adventure. So I have finished stage 1010 right now, which is kind of the next big step in unlocking your account. I didn't do any of the side missions, so you can see a lot of these little circles are not filled in. My goal was just to get straight to, you know, the 1010 stage so that I could unlock the next um, the next part of the game. Once I finished that, I did a little bit more along the adventure path. Uh, we started working on Free Spirit uh, Tira. Um, and we have unlocked a bunch of stuff, so now we can get the pet house. We're ranked 25. Uh, we have epic passes, um, so there's a lot to go over. Uh, one of the things that you get when you finish stage 1010 is the ability to do moonlight summons. So that's always very exciting. We can, I guess, they give us one, I think. Uh, do they? Maybe they don't. But oh, we do get this little summon here. Ooh, we got Zahawk. I think this was from the new player check-in event. Zahawk is a uh, decent character in PvP right now, but you don't really use him for PvE. That's the case with many. And then we got uh, Blood, or just uh, Fire Haste, and then also Shimadra Staff. Shimadra Staff is an okay artifact for Soul Weavers, but kind of niche more PvP use than PvE. Uh, but not the worst, for sure. I'm going to go ahead and limit break this Magrahas Tome. Okay, so now that we've you know progressed through the story, we want to kind of figure out what our next step is. And that's building up Wyvern 13. Along the way of doing episode 1010, no thank you, no thank you, uh, we unlocked Hunts. So you can see these are now unlocked. And you can start clearing out some of the early ones. The Wyvern section is the stage you need to pay attention to because this is the hunt that drops uh, Speed Set, which is the most universal uh, set in the game. You can see right down there, Speed Set. And this is not really, you know, like a Wyvern team. This is just the team I've been using to clear adventure with right now. Um, so we want to assemble our Wyvern team together to en enable us to farm this stage right here. Hunt stage 13 in, in Wyvern, so Wyvern 13. And the team we're going to use for that is going to be, as I discussed, Montmorency. Uh, so we have to get her to six stars and we have to, um, you know, fully upgrade her skills and then do her specialty change. Another hero that we're going to bring along is Mui. This is a hero you have to pull from summons, so I was doing just kind of daily summons and I got her. She's a 3-star, so you'll easily have her summoned by the time you actually need her for Wyvern. Um, she's on my world team just so you know she can level up and stuff along the way. Um, so these are the two that I have right now. Uh, we need two more. One is Sigrid, and you get Sigrid for free, let's see, here. Uh, when you unlock hunts, if you scroll all the way down, you can see this hunt expert challenge. So you get this unlocked and uh, you can select a particular hunt. Once you unlock this, I selected Wyvern, which is the one you should do if you want Sigrid. And you can see what you have to do here to unlock her. So you have to complete Wyvern hunt seven uh, or higher 20 times, um, obtain some catalyst, which you can farm, you know, in adventures and then promote uh, Phantasma to five star a couple times. So this is, you know, I've already done this once. Um, so this is pretty simple to do and you know, you'll get that along the way. The last hero that we need is Furious and he is here in Connections. I think I mentioned him before, he's right here. Uh, we have to get to episode 310 to unlock him. So that's kind of what I'll do for the next video. Um, I just wanted to give you kind of the direction that you should be looking. So now that you've, you know, cleared episode 1010, you've unlocked a bunch of the game. Um, there are a few progression questions that you need to answer. And one of those progression related questions is, what do I do with my Breath of Orbises? So when you're farming adventure, um, I went straight to episode 1010 and I skipped these along the way. You can see that these are not done, but you have these little stages here in adventure with this little diamond looking icon thing. So every time you clear one of those stages, you get a Breath of Orbis. You can go into the sanctuary and you can spend one of them to upgrade one of these buildings. Um, they're pretty much all unlocked, I think, by the time you do 1010. So I think most people upgrade this Heart of Orbis first. You can already see I've invested a few in it. And the reason why is because it takes a bit of time to you know progress your account into Wyvern, and this is generating you free res resources the whole time. The Steel Workshop, you 
must upgrade, you know, to 333 here, but you can't really use this until you're farming Wyvern. So this doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, so might as well upgrade something that gives you free resources in the meantime. Um, so this, this becomes a priority once you get into Wyvern. And you do have the option of, um, I believe you can reset these, collect the Breath of Orbises and put them somewhere else. So if you really want to, you can, you know, take them out of the Heart of Orbis and put them in Steel Workshop once you start farming and you want to craft. Uh, because you use the mats you get from Wyvern to make items here. Um, high Command, once you max out uh, the Breath of Orbis or you put a few in there, might be worth tossing a few in these buildings just so that you can unlock the missions uh, here. I think most people recommend just doing one in each of these so that you can unlock these two-hour missions. Um, you can see it right here. It's this two-hour mission for the Ancient Coins um, in the Hunt mission. And then for the War mission, it's again the two-hour one for these Conquest points. Those are the two that I do on my main account. And once I unlock these by putting one in each of these, uh, I just never really looked at it again. So I'll probably, the next couple, I'll probably throw in here just so I can get this rolling as well. Um, that might be worth doing, you know, alongside the, the Heart of Orbis. Um, Forest of Souls, I don't think you really need to touch this too much. Um, yeah, getting penguins and, you know, the spirit wall and stuff are nice, but I would focus on the others. And then Alchemist Steeple, this is the one that kind of comes at the end. Um, this is worth maxing once you're later in the game, but early in the game, it's harder to use it, I think. Um, yeah, just because you're not really going to have the resources and stuff uh, to use the things in here. But this allows you to make equipment conversion and catalysts and um, exclusive equipment. You can basically turn in resources and exchange, you know, one thing for another thing. Um, kind of like tra transmuting, I guess, you know, one thing to another thing. Um, it is a nice place to make charms, which I guess I can do. Although I don't know how I can even fill this all the way, but might as well make some charms. Cool, we got charms. Um, I think you can do this every week. I don't really have any like high level gear to throw into it, but just might as well get something. Charms are a huge bottleneck. Um, we don't have the resources for this. You need to uh, farm Wyvern to get that basically. So we're not there yet. So that, that's the first progression related question. I think that you should ask yourself is how do I invest my Breath of Orbises? So you've cleared stage 1010, you get those, you know, you go back and you farm up the breasts um, I would improve the Heart of Orbis and High Command and then move over to the Steel Workshop when it's time uh, to start farming. So your next question is, who do I six star? Because if you've been farming adventure and, you know, getting your dogs leveled up, you can see I have two five star dogs right here. So we need five of these to turn a unit into a six star. Um, I have a bunch of these black dogs queued up, ready to go. We just need to farm a little bit more, but we're getting close. And, you know, I think this is a bit of a contentious topic. Um, you have two main options on who you six star first. Uh, the first would be your Wyvern 13 tank. Uh, that's Angelic Montmorency um, right here. So she'll be the tank for Wyvern. Um, I think this would be a decent six star and uh, probably who I will do um, because your other option is going to be your free spirit uh, Tira. And the argument for doing this, at least in the past, is this is your farmer unit. Um, I've been using her. You get her for free uh, in the game. They give her to you through the connections. Um, and she is a, a good farmer, you know, if you don't have Vildred or Arbiter Vildred. Um, you know, she comes plus 15 right away, so you don't have to worry about investing stuff in Molagora. And she has a little adventure path of her own that gives you resources to awaken her and unlock stuff. So she's a very, you know, low investment unit to use. Uh, so you kind of might as well use her uh, for farming. Um, I just don't know if we need her to be six star to farm effectively, at least in the short term. Um, so this is a tough choice. I think I'm going to go with Montmorency, um, and then we'll, you know, do Mui, Sigrid, and um, Furious. Uh, but yeah, probably Montmorency, and then Sigrid, and then I'll do Mui, and then Furious. I think Furious, you probably don't even need to six star for Wyvern 13 because he's basically just there as a defense breaker. And you know, once I get that team assembled, we'll go over the mechanics. Um, so those are the two big progression-related questions I wanted to address in this update. Um, and we do, that's, you know, what we got for clearing 1010 was the what gold transmit think? stones. So we can do that. Yeah, they're right here. And oh, actually, I guess we've collected two of them. So we get two Moonlight summons. How exciting is that? Um, so I'm just going to collect them and summon them for content. Um, I think it is, you know, fun to do these as you progress in the game. There is another big use for them, though. Um, you can see here this four to five hero summon ticket. I would not do this one. Uh, this is a trap. You know, you're going to get plenty of four star heroes just by pulling, uh, you know, your daily summon. And the vast majority of these are, these tickets turn into four stars. So I just don't think they're very useful. 
Um, likewise, the five star heroes are pretty common in the game. Like you can see, we just got a couple for free, you know, for the login events and stuff. Um, so they're not really that that critical to get through here. Uh, whereas the galaxy bookmarks give you moonlight heroes, and those are a lot harder to get. So I'd focus on those. Um, so you can see up here, that's the only thing you can use these gold transmits for. Um, however, when you get certain moonlight heroes, uh, they can have their imprints uh, unlocked via these transmits. And it's 50 gold transmit stones to fully triple S them. So there are a few of these heroes. They're typically the chapter bosses. Uh, I can give you one example off the top of my head is, let's see, oh, question. Oh, you don't even see her here because, you know, they don't want to spoil the story. Well, it's Bellion. And th there's a bunch of other ones like Archdemon, you know, Shadow and stuff. Um, so that could be something you would save the gold transmits for is to be able to triple S them um, if you want. Uh, but I think most people will probably pull a few heroes, you know, just along the way. And then once they get the hero that can use the imprints, then they will, you know, save up their gold transmits to triple S them. So, for example, like Ras here, he's level B. Uh, 50 gold transmits would turn one of those Moonlight Fives into, you know, the triple S down here and allow you to give more stats to your team. So, uh, Fribbles popped up there for a second. So I think that's, uh, those are the main things I wanted to address. Let's see, did we unlock? Oh no, we're gonna do the summons, that's right. I'm all scatterbrained. So here we go, here's a, the very first Moonlight Summon on this account. Uh, it looks like it's a three star, because we didn't get sparkles. So the gold sparkles, um, you know, indicate a four or five star for artifacts and heroes if they are a, um, you know, RGB. Uh, red, green, blue, but moonlights are purple. So if you see purple sparkles, you're getting a four or five star moonlight hero. Uh, this is Lorena. She is, I think, actually one of the better three stars you could pull in the beginning because you could specialty change her and use her for a lot of early PvE content and like Abyss and stuff. Um, we get Spectre to Nibiru for free, so it may not be necessary to get her. It looks like we got another three star. That's a bummer. Um, yeah, she's, so she's useful in like Abyss content later on. Okay, and then we get, I think this is Bat Batiste. Yeah, he's a uh, useless. Nobody uses this guy. Survive. I like that. We do have to look at his little intro, though. Um, people get really frustrated with these Moonlight Summons because if you look at the odds, you know, it's like 2.5% for a 5 star, which is low, obviously, but, you know, that's higher than like a 5 star for Covenant Summons. Um, and it just seems like you never pull 5 star Moonlights from this. Um, I'm sure it's, you know, all fine, and it's probably just a small sample size because you don't do this very often. Um, oh, I guess we also have Mystic Summons here. So these, as I explained, I think in one of the first videos, this is another type of bookmark, um, and it allows you to pull on this type of, this Mystic banner here. So this banner rotates. Um, it alternates between new heroes and old heroes, and old heroes, um, when they're on banner, allow you to pick between one of four. So out of these four heroes... Uh, you can pick which one. And right, actually, right now it's on Bellion, who is you know that chapter boss we talked about. Um, so out of here, out of these four, I think Bellion is by far the most useful. These other three are pretty useless. Um, J. Kisei we talked about. Specimen says is arguably the worst Moonlight five star in the game. And Spirit Eye Selene has a very niche role in PvP, um, and even that niche role goes in and out of usefulness. And right now it's not really useful. So I think you know if you wanted any of these, it would be Bellion. Um, there's also a four-star hero. Um, you can toggle your pity between these two, which might be a little confusing. Um, so the way pity works is, you know, after you, if you summon 200 times on this banner and you don't get the hero, then the next summon is a guaranteed for that hero. Um, so this is the pity for the five-star. You can toggle it over to the four-star if you want, and now you have a pity for the four-star. So if you summon the five-star, it doesn't affect your five-star pity. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this as a free-to-play player because you kind of need all of your Mystic Medals for the five stars. And if you get the four stars, great. And if you don't, uh, tough luck, I guess. Um, so in addition to the Moonlight Hero, this banner rotates on a weekly basis uh, for normal heroes and artifacts that you can see here. Um, the Moonlight stay for a month, and then each week this stuff rotates. You can click this button and see this is going to be the next week rotation. And I guess this is actually the end of the month because we have a new Moonlight 5 Death Dealer Ray coming. So when it's a new Moonlight 5, they're just all by themselves. You don't get to pick, you know, one of, one of four options. Um, and then the four star is Crimson Armin. Um, but yeah, so I guess, you know, we might as well try and pull for Bellion here. Let's see who we get. Okay, that's a nothing. A nothing. This is new, though. I can't skip it.
Oh, Lena. So Lena's actually a pretty decent farmer. Uh, you know, if you didn't want to use Free Spirit Tira, uh, Lena's is not bad. She has pretty fast animations. Um, so for, you know, moving through the story missions. Right, we got Sparks. Oh, wow, we got the artifact. How exciting. Uh, so this will be RNL. Uh, Rihanna and Lucella, because you can, you know, there's only one five star artifact and one five star RGB hero on this banner. And looks like we can, yep, another Taton. So we'll go ahead and lock that artifact. Oops. It's a thief. Uh, this artifact is um, useful in PvP right now, uh, but, you know, not, not amazing for PvE. Okay, was there anything else I wanted to go over? Let me see. Oh, another thing, once you get to 1010 that you unlock, you, you may even unlock this a little bit earlier, is the Epic Pass. And this is something that um, I think most people feel, you know, it's worth it to buy. Um, you see this system in a lot of games. It's like called the Battle Pass in some. And essentially, you know, just by playing the game, you get these rewards. Um, they tell you what you need to do here to get EXP to progress your pass. Basically use energy, you, you know, do the Labyrinth, do Arena, do Abyss. And um, as you do that, you unlock, you know, this pass. Um, you have, you know, roughly a month to get it, and then, um, you know, it rotates out. Uh, you don't always have the ability to work on an Epic Pass. Like, they'll be open for a little while, and then they go away for a while and come back. Um, and then each one is usually comes with a skin of some sort that you can buy for extra Sky Stones. So you can um, do this upgrade right here, and you have two options. You can buy the upgraded track only for 900, or you can get the upgraded track, rewards track, and also get this skin uh, for 1800. Um, and you know, if you want the skin, it's just whether you want it or not, that's purely cosmetic. Um, most people feel like the rewards here in this premium, you know, pathway are worth the 900 sky stones. So I think for most people, I would recommend buying it if you're going to complete it. Um, it's not worth buying if you're not going to, you know, complete the majority of it. Um, you have the option of buying rank. So right now I'm rank four, so you can click this and you can spend real sky stones, you know, to unlock the whole thing if you want to. Um, that's, I think, only really a desperation. Like, if you're right at the end and you don't have time to play, you can't make it, uh, then go ahead and buy it. Otherwise, don't do this. This is just, you know, throwing Sky Stones away. Um, you also don't have to buy it to get the rewards until it's unlocked. Um, or you don't have to buy it right away and then work on unlocking it. You can just wait until the end of the month and see how far you get to see if it's worth buying. Um, so that's probably what I would do for this account or, you know, a free-to-play account. But okay, I think that'll wrap it up for this next part of the guide. So now that we've cleared stage 1010, the next thing I'm going to focus on is unlocking Furious uh, via the you know connection. So I'm going to have to progress through the story a bit. Another thing I need to do is I need to unlock specialty changes uh, so that we can unlock Montmorency's specialty change. And it looks like we have here. Oh, so we can go over this really quickly. Um, and they give us Flurry. That's neat. So we're going to definitely start Montmorency. That's the one we want. Um, so we'll start this. So basically doing a special, I'm just going to skip the story. Um, doing a specialty change allows you to uh, do the quest line for a particular hero. And when it's finished, um, you unlock a new version of them. And this new version has enhanced abilities. So you can see right here, her skill three, it adds an extra ability. Um, and you can see what that does here. In addition to that, they get what's called a skill tree. So you can spend the runes you get from... Uh, you know, that you use to awaken heroes, um, and you can spend those, it's quite a few runes, um, to get all of these bonuses. And each skill tree is different for each specialty changed hero. Uh, most of these little runes in the specialty change add bonus stats, but then some of them add abilities, extra abilities. So you can see here, uh, this adds a percentage chance to dispel an additional debuff, right, when she uses this ability. But I think they have a nice little overview of like all the skill enhancements the hero gets um, from the specialty uh, skill tree, uh, the specialty change skill tree. Um, it's a lot of runes, so you have to really farm quite a bit to unlock that, uh, but that's something you do after you finish these quests. So as soon as you unlock um, the ability to do a specialty change, which I think is around 1010, because I checked before and I didn't have it, I mean, I just finished 1010 and I have it now, um, I you know, you should definitely select Montmorency first, because, you know, you'll do these just by playing the game in the background, um, and that can help uh, unlock these. So it looks like they've actually changed her specialty change since when I did it on my main account. You used to have to get catalysts, I think. For this quest here, Eliminate 500 Spirits, you can usually click Go and they'll show you the stage you need to use to farm it. Uh, here they didn't really do that. But I think, um, I think stage 5-4 has a lot of these spirits. 
So let's take a look. Here's five. Here we go. Five. And five. Here's five four. So we can check. Yeah, see the these monsters here. I think do these kind of spirits. I think they are. Or this one is. Yeah, night seed. Yeah. So these are spirits. So this stage has a bunch of spirits, um, and I think most people recommend you do five four to unlock that. And you just have to farm it a bunch of times to get the five hundred. Um, the rest of her specialty change, I think, is fairly straightforward. You only need to um, clear a labyrinth and then just acquire, you know, AP on this map, which is just farming it. And then the trial battle is just a little thing you fight after, you know, you finish the others. You can typically just auto these. So this this specialty change is actually pretty easy. Um, you can have two of these unlocked at a time. Um, the character does have to be a, at a certain level to you know, level it up, um, or to activate it, I mean. Um, and they'll see how it, you have to level up Lorena here. Um, because she's not level 30, we can't start her specialty change quest. So a second one to do in addition to Montmorency, I think Lorena would be a good one if you pull her. Um, and at some point, you can do Adventure Rass, or turn Rass into Adventure Rass, and this is something that is like a must-do for all accounts, uh, because, you know, his specialty change version is a lot more useful. Uh, but we can't do it until 10.10. So um, I'll probably just bring her up to level 30 so I can start Lorena's one. Um, so that's what I'm going to work on for next time, doing this and unlocking Furious. Uh, and then we will kind of address, okay, now that we have the heroes, we need to get gear for them and get them wyvern ready. Uh, I will see you next time. Later.